I never intended to hurt those youngsters, but I knew that if I got going, something would happen, and that made me cry. I would throw myself on top of those boys and bite through their Adam's apples. Harmon would usually target young males and teenage runaways. He found his victims hanging around at Hanover Central Station. He would lure them into his apartment. He would then offer them food or drinks, then kill them by biting through their throats, which he referred to as his love bites. Born in Hanover, Germany on October 25, 1879, Fritz Harmon was the sixth child of a couple living in poverty. Ollie, his father, and Johanna, his mother. Harmon's mother made him play with his sister's dolls instead of boy activities. As a result, he seemed to have a feminine personality. He also had sadistic tendencies in which he enjoyed tying up his sisters. By age 16, he was arrested for molesting several children, but was deemed psychologically unfit. He was sentenced to a mental institution where he escaped six months later. At age 20, he married a woman named Erna Lowert. After having a child, he leaves Erna to pursue a career in the military. Shortly after joining the military, Harmon was diagnosed with a mental deficiency and was discharged. After being discharged, he started a series of petty crimes and con jobs. He spent about one-third of the following two decades being incarcerated. He then decided to become a police informer, just to redirect police attention from himself. Shortly after, Harmon finally snapped, killing a 17-year-old boy. Tips given to the authorities and the pressure of the boy's parents, police raided Harmon's home, finding him in bed with a teenage boy. He was arrested for sexual assault. Police never searched Harmon's house. As a result, he was cleared of any suspicion of the murder. Eventually released, Harmon met a new lover, Hans Granz, who would later become his accomplice. I'd make two cuts in the abdomen and put the intestines in a bucket. Then soak up the blood and crush the bones until the shoulders broke. Now I could get the heart, lungs, and kidneys and chop them up and put them in my bucket. It would take me five or six trips to take everything and throw it down the toilet or into the river. I always hated doing this, but I couldn't help it. My passion was much stronger than the horror of the cutting and chopping. They killed 12 men over the course of nine months. They would dump the victim's bones in the Line River. The killing went unnoticed until over 500 human bones belonging to their victims start washing upstream. Suspicion quickly fell on him due to his molestation charges. Police apprehended him after he attempted to lure in a would-be victim. Following his arrest, Harmon's attic apartment was searched. The flooring, walls, and bedding within were found to be extensively bloodstained, Harmon attempted to explain this as a byproduct of his illegal trading in contraband meat. The trial of Fritz Harmon and Hans Grains began on December 4, 1924. Several acquaintances of Harmon testified for the prosecution, including former neighbors who testified to having purchased meat from Harmon. Harmon's landlady and her family became ill after eating sausages and skins Harmon claimed were sheep's intestines. The trial lasted barely two weeks. Judge Sane, and accountable for his actions, Harmon was found guilty of 24 murders and sentenced to death by beheading. Following Harmon's execution, Harmon's head was preserved in formaldehyde and sections of his brain were removed for forensic analysis. An examination of slices of Harmon's brain revealed traces of meningitis. Believe me, I'm not ill. It's only that I occasionally have funny turns. I want to be beheaded. It'll only take a moment. Then I'll be at peace. A memorial for Harmon's victims was built in Stalkener Cemetery, 